Hello, it's Make It Month 5 and today we're going to look at how to set bezels where the background becomes an element of the jewellery design. So rather than cutting the base of the bezel setting away like we did in the previous video, we're going to leave the base wider and turn it into a design feature of the piece of jewellery and we're also going to look at how to set corners. So here I have two little Marquis Labradorite Cabajon stones. So marquees is the shape, so this double-ended point that we're going to have to navigate and set. And if you remember back to the previous video, the reason they are cabochons is because they've been cut nice and smooth on the top and they have a nice flat back. And we're going to be setting them with some bezel wire. So this is the 0.3mm tall bezel wire and I'm going to set them onto a piece of silver that I found that a student um, textured but didn't use. So I found this scrap piece of silver and I've got this shape template so I thought it'd be quite nice to make a pair of earrings because I can think, oh, <laughs> stop wobbling. I can fit two of these shapes on there and this stone, if I can pick it up, would look quite nice in the middle of it somehow. So that's what I'm going to work on. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put some masking tape on this so that I can draw that shape nicely on the surface of my silver. I've drawn the shape on the silver sheet and because this piece of silver is so thin I'm going to cut it out with my shears um, but obviously if it was thicker or if you wanted a bit more control you could use your jeweler's piercing saw I'm just going to quickly do it with this because the hammer textured anyway so it doesn't need to be 100% perfect um, and also I'm going to give them a little file in a minute. So I'm just taking the masking tape off and then I'm going to give these edges a file and a bit of a sand all over. And also make sure they're nice and flat so I need to mallet them flat. Remember when you're filing, the file only cuts on the forward motion. So it's push and lift, push forwards and lift, forwards and lift, rather than doing that motion back and forwards. And also if you're filing a curve, you need to rotate your file with that curve rather than just filing a flat pad. So push and curve pushing curve. It's easier if you can do this by supporting this hand in your bench peg. So if you remember with your files they only cut on the forward motion so you want to push and lift, push and lift rather than doing this backwards and forwards motion. And also if you're filing a curved surface make sure you're moving your file with the curve rather than just filing a flat section as you go along. Once you've filed your edges, you want to get rid of any little burrs and scratches with some nice fine emery paper, some wet and dry. This one is about 2000 grit. So I'm just removing any rough bits and any little scratches. You can fold it over to make it a little bit more robust. I've filed and sanded my little silver shapes. So now I need to make the bezel wall for my stones. Now, stones with a point, you would normally start the wall on an edge rather than on the point. Just because it's going to make soldering a little bit easier. If the stones are small and it's quite difficult to hold them while bending the wire around, you could stick a little bit of double-sided sticky tape to a flat surface like your bench block. Stick the stone to that so you know the stone's not going to move and then it'll be easier to get a bit more leverage when measuring your bezel wire and you want to pull it nice and snug to the outside contour of your stone.
there you go nice and snug and they say one of the tests is you should be if it's a small stone you should be able to pick it up without it falling out of the bezel and you can see I've marked with a sharpie where the bezel wire overlaps where it meets so that's where I'm going to cut it and I know that I'll be able to cut both my bits of bezel the same size because I actually measured this one around that stone but it fits this one quite nicely after measuring my bezel wire I don't care about the shape anymore I just care about getting a nice tight join so that's what I've got I've got them coming the join coming together nice and flat and parallel I've fluxed both sides of the join and I've stuck a little bit of solder underneath each one so now I'm going to get my torch and I'm going to heat it until the solder melts so I've got to remember to heat both sides evenly There it goes, and then onto this one. And there we go. I've popped my little bezels back over my stone, and they should start to form to the shape of the stone quite easily. Um, but if they need a little extra help, you could use a pusher to push it against the side profile of the stone. I've just stuck it onto the masking tape to make it a little bit easier for me to do that. So what I would do is I would push supporting the other side with my hand just so that it takes that shape a little bit easier. So this one's not looking too bad. This one needs a little bit more work doing to it. So I'm going to do that. Once I've done that, I'm going to take the stone out. And similar to the previous videos, I need to make sure the back of this bezel is sitting completely flat to the front of my base piece. So that is probably going to require some sanding. I've sanded my bezel until it sits completely flat to my base, to no daylight. I fluxed them and I've put some little bits of hard solder inside so that it's sat flat on the base but also buttered up against the wall. And now I'm ready to heat. But I'm just going to heat the air a little bit so that that flux can evaporate nice and slowly rather than boiling and knocking all my carefully placed solder out of the way. Just heating the air so it can evaporate lovely and slowly. In a second, once the water's evaporated from the flux, a little bit more, I'm going to start heating but I need to concentrate all my heat on the base while missing the little wall of bezel as much as possible because both bits need to be the same temperature but that does not mean heating them the same amount. So now I'm going to start heating my base piece but I'm angling my torch to miss that bezel wall. So I'm getting all the heat through the base and not directly hitting the heating the bezel at all because that's really thin and really squishy and it's higher up so it'll heat up a lot quicker than the base piece will. When the base is getting up to temperature, I'll keep both together and you can see the solder just started to flow there, but I want it to flow a bit more. So I'm going to keep heating around a tiny bit in the middle until I know that that solder has flowed all the way around that joint. And then I'll move on to the next piece. So same again, angling the torch to miss my bezel getting the piece up to temperature first and then when the base is up to temperature then I can start heating them both together. There we go. Make sure that the solder's flowed around the top area but I'm still angling it to miss that bezel as much as possible. And there, that's flowed all the way around, I'm happy with that. My little settings are out of the pickle, I've given them a quick sand and I'm just sitting the stone next to them to check the height of the wall. So as you can see this particular stone has really quite high flat edges. So the overall height of the bezel wall isn't too bad 
Um, I might give it a tiny, tiny sand, but I certainly don't think it needs filing down any. But what would happen is if I popped that stone in there now and just set the bezel the same way as if it was a round stone, the point on the setting and the point of the stone, when I rubbed those over, if it was a little bit high, it's just going to bunch up and make a bit of a mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little needle file and I'm just going to file off just lower that point a tiny bit so here 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 and here so that when I rub it over it's not going to bunch up and make a, a big mess. Now ideally I'd be holding this on a nice flat surface but I'm just doing it like this so you can see what I'm up to. So I'm just gently filing in fact because this is a little diamond file I can go back and forwards unlike a normal file. Um, I'm just going to gently lower this point a little bit. I'm going to do that on the other side as well. So I've just gently lowered where the points are. And depending on how I was going to attach my ear wires, I could now set my stone. If I need to do any more soldering, I've got to do that first. I think what I'm going to do is pop a little hole in here and just attach the ear wires directly through a hole rather than soldering them on. But I think what I would like to do is potentially add a bit more detail to this base. Um, so over here I have all the little offcuts from when I cut those shapes out originally. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to melt them into little balls and then decide whether or not to solder any of those little balls onto my um, earrings. To make the little balls, I've popped the silver in the flux, so they've got a nice covering of flux, and then I could pop them onto my normal brick, but I, because I have one, I'm going to use a charcoal block. Now, normally, traditionally, when you make little balls, um, for adding these decorative elements, you would use fine silver because that doesn't pit and crater in the same way as sterling. Um, but if you don't want those pits, a charcoal block helps minimise them We'll talk a lot more about that another time. There we go, lots of silver balls. And what I could do is decide which one I wanted to use and solder them onto my earrings for decorative effect. So I just need to decide what size and what number visually look the most pleasing and then I'll solder them on. I've decided on the ball that I want to use. I fluxed um, my base, my earring, and the bottom side of the ball, and I've nestled a tiny bit of hard solder um, opposite where I'm going to be heating, so it's on the base and it's butted up against the side of the ball. Now, as ever, I'm going to heat the air, just so that the water in that flux can evaporate nice and slowly and not stop bubbling and knocking everything out of position. Then I'm going to start heating the areas I'm trying to solder together um, while missing my bezel. So angling the torch so I don't directly heat that bezel. There we go, that's the solder flown on that one, so I'm going to move on to this one. Again, angling the torch so I'm missing the bezel and I'm getting that ball and the base up to temperature. And that's the solder run on that one as well. I've decided I want to do a little bit of metal stamping around the outside so I've got the stamp that I want to use and I'm just going to do this by eye. Obviously if you wanted to be more accurate um, you could get a sharpie and draw your guidelines in. Same on the other side. Okay. 
There we go. So I just need to drill my little hole for the ear wires and then I'm ready to set my stone. I've drilled two little holes, ready for some ear wires. So now I'm able to start setting my stone. So I'm going to take my stone, pop it into the setting, like so. Same on the other one. There we go, and then they're ready to set, same as before. So I have my pusher, and the only thing that I'm going to do a bit differently is I'm going to start at the corner, but I'm going to push the silver away from the corner. So, for example, this focuses. If that's the corner, instead of pushing it over the corner, I'm going to push it down the length of the stone. I'll try and film this from a different angle so you can see a bit better. Okay, so instead of pushing straight on that corner and rocking it over, I'm going to push this bezel wall away from the corner. So I'm going to push and rock as if I'm pushing it down the length of the stone. Because if I bunch it up, if I push it straight on that corner, that metal is going to bunch up a little bit. So I know that, I, that we lowered it with the file, but we still don't want it to bunch up. So when we push, I'm going to push on the edge of the corner and rock it in that direction away from the stone. I'm going to do it down here so you can see. So again this would be easier on a flat surface but it's easier for you guys to see here so I'm going to hold it. I'm pushing up against the corner but when I rock I'm rocking away from that corner. Same on the other side so push and rock. Same on the opposite side. Push and rock. Push and rock. Now I just need to keep going. And if you remember from last time we did the setting, you need to work at opposites. And you need to keep the pressure on when you're rocking over the curve of the stone. And I want to keep going until I don't have any of these lumpy bumpy bits left. And as you can see, it's already starting to smooth out a little bit. Push and rock. Push and rock. There's a lumpy bit. Push and rock. It's already starting to look a lot better. Push and rock. I'm going to keep going. Again on that corner, pushing away from the corner. Now that I've pushed it as far as I can with either the pusher or the rocker, I'm going to stop burnishing it. So, as you can see, it's a lot harder this time for me to get in and burnish it properly. So I just have to find an angle where I'm able to push on that edge, because if you remember, the whole point of the burnisher is to smooth out any last little wrinkly bits, as well as to slightly harden off the metal and give it a nice polish, so a nice smooth finish. And you just have to do your best to get around any little fiddly bits and just make sure you don't jab yourself with the, the sharp end or scratch your work. I want to make a pair of ear wires to finish my earrings off and I want a little ball on the end to emulate the little ball that I soldered onto the bottom of them. So I've got some 0.8mm round silver wire, a fluxed the end of it and I'm going to put that end right in the tip of the blue flame to so the very end of the wire and very tip of the blue flame and I'm going to hold it there until it starts to melt and it will start to form up into a little ball. I'm going to pop that there so I can check the size and I'm going to do the same on the other one. Check the size. That looks about even to me. 
So now I'm going to turn my torch off, clean these and shape them into earrings. To shape my wire into earrings, I've taken some round nose pliers and I'm going to hold both the wires at the same time so those little balls are nestled on the top of the pliers. Nice tight grip, I'm going to take the wire sticking out the bottom and I'm going to push it tight to the pliers all the way around until it comes around and touches those balls. At that point, I'm going to get something that's the right circumference for the amount of curve I want on the top of my ear wire, which is personal preference. I'm going to use a doming punch just because I've got loads, but you know, pen, felt tip, sharpie, anything like that will do. Again, I'm holding both wires together and I'm going to bend my wire nice and tight around the doming punch until it touches the back of the wires that are in the pliers. At that point, I'm going to take the pliers off, keeping my ear wires on there. I'm going to grab the ends and go. Week. There we go, and now I can take this out and I have a matching pair of ear wires. Um, in previous videos there's a proper tutorial where you can see that in a bit more detail, but all I need to do now is decide whether or not to cut these tails a little bit shorter, I think I might, and then I'm going to file and round off those ends. So filing it flat, beveling it slightly to take any burrs off, and then giving it a good sand just to round it off and make it feel nice and smooth. The other thing you're going to want to do is because um, melted the end of them, they're going to be a little bit squishy. So I'm just going to work hard on them slightly. Obviously you would do this in a much more controlled manner, holding onto them or taping them down and just be careful not to hammer the little balls. But this is just going to harden those wires up a little bit to make them a bit more springy. Lastly, in here I've got some liver of sulphur, which is a chemical that is going to tarnish my silver. So I'm just going to paint that on. If I was... Um, dunking the entire piece in I'd mix this liver of sulphur with a bit more water and just throw the whole piece in but with this one I just want to paint certain areas and then in a minute I'm going to buff the high areas back with some wire wool there we go so they've blackened and tarnished up nicely and now what I'm going to do is give them a little rub with some wire wool just to bring a little bit of shine back onto them. There we go, all done. Bezels with fancy backgrounds and sharp corners.